In this series, I'll walk you through how to use Cogito to make your game. If you haven't heard of Cogito, it is a free Godot engine project template that enables you to make first person adventures, shooters, and immersive sim type games. Each video that I make will cover one topic, so you can watch them in any order. Though if you're new to Cogito, I recommend you start at the first one. In this video, I'm using some assets made by Loaf BRR, or as I'd like to pronounce it, Loaf Brr. They make great assets for Godot and a lot of them are free, so check them out via the link in the description. They didn't pay me to say this, but I just like their assets and I wanted to give them a shout out. All right, so let's get started. Okay, let's continue. Um, so last time we just set up our player and made sure the scene is playable with Kogito. And now I wanna take some of these assets that were included and make those interactive. Um, so I'm gonna start with something very, very basic. So here we have this tray and I wanna make sure the player can maybe um, pick this up and make it just like a generic ragdoll object. Um, so you can see here that it's just like uh, its own scene. So I'm gonna open up the scene and I see it has like a mesh and a static body collision shape. I'm gonna change this a little bit to make sure it works with Kogito. Tool. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new node that's gonna be a rigid body 3D. And this is gonna be my new root node of this. So I'm gonna make sure to right click and then make scene root. This changes the hierarchy a little bit, which is no problem. Um, that's what I want. And now you see this little warning that says it doesn't have a collision shape. Um, that's no problem. We'll just move this up. And then we'll get another warning. That means Richard Buddy doesn't support this kind of collision shape. That's fine because this is a pretty complex collision shape for a rigid body. So I'll just get rid of it and make a new one. And I'm gonna create just like a box shape. And then I'm gonna adjust this box shape to uh, match my object. So I'll just do this real quick. I'm not gonna be like super precise about it. I'm just approximating this here. There we go. So that matches up our mesh. Uh, that means I can also get rid of the static body that I have over here. So I'll just delete that node. And there we go. I'm gonna call this food tray. And then I'm gonna turn this into a Kogito object. And I'm doing this by doing quick load on the script and type in Kogito object. And that's it. And you can see the icon has changed to indicate this is a Kogito object. So now that we've turned the food tray into a Kogito object, we can attach interactions to it. And I'm gonna actually do that right now. I'm gonna attach a carryable interaction to it, a carryable component. Carryable component enables the player to carry this object around like in 3D space. Um, I'm gonna just check the settings. There's a pickup sound and a drop sound, carry distance offset. So this is a small object, so I'm gonna just Reduce this by half a meter. Uh, lock rotation is on. That's all good. If you're not sure what any parameter is for, just read the tooltips um, and that should help you figure it out. Um, one thing that's important for Tokyo object is the collision layer. I have to make sure it's in collision layer 2 to be picked up by the player interaction. All right, let's do that real quick and then let's try if this works. I'm gonna stop my scene. Okay, gonna walk up and there we go. Get the prompt to carry. Once I press it, I can carry it around. Oop, and dropping it. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, if I drop it on the table, kind of glitches a little bit through and that's because of our collision shape so if you have something like this happen 
um, you wanna, yeah, you wanna adjust your collider. Go to my collision shape. Let's see how big that actually is. Okay, it's very, very small. Um, what also sometimes helps if you adjust the margin. And then I'm gonna just make it a little bit more at the bottom. Okay, that looks good. Just saving it, going back to my scene. And let's give it a try. Yeah, as you can see, if I try to push it into the table, it looks a bit better now. Okay, so I just talked you through setting up the tray as a carryable interactive object. But I wanted to do a little bit more. Um, so I'm also gonna check out this barrel over there and turn this one into a carryable object as well. So let's get started. First, again, we're gonna create Rich Party 3D. I'm gonna call this Barrel Carryable. And then also because I don't wanna overwrite this scene that is included, I'm gonna actually save the scene as, and I'm gonna just call this Kuito Barrel Carryable. There we go. Um, now I don't have to worry about overriding the included props and scenes. Um, then again, I'm gonna right click on my rigid body and go repair it to new node. Uh, repair it, not repair it. Make scene root, that's what I want. And you can see the hierarchy change again. I'm gonna move up the collision shape, get rid of the static body, and there we go. And then again, we'll get our little warning that just collision shape it doesn't really work for a rigid body so again I'm gonna just get rid of it and make a new one this time I'm gonna make a cylinder shape and I'm gonna move this up make this smaller oh okay I see okay next we're gonna again make this into a Kogito object so I'm gonna load the script Kogi to object. Make sure this is attached to the root node of the scene. And this time I'm gonna change some of these settings. Um, first I'm gonna increase the mass to like 25. Then I'm gonna attach our interaction. This will again be a carryable component. And checking here distance offset I do minus half a meter again um, I'm gonna actually use the barrel sound for pickup sound sounds like this nice and hollow and then I'm gonna I'm gonna add the impact sounds component the impact sounds component does exactly what it says basically as soon as this object bumps into other things It'll play a sound and I'm going to make this have a unique array of impact sounds. Um, I'm going to remove the one that's in there and I'm going to also add the barrel sound there. And what helps because I only have one sound is I'm going to really just play with the pitch. I'm going to use random pitch 1.6. The volume is already a bit random as well. That helps. And if you want to use this component, um, the object needs to continuously know if it's colliding with other colliders. And you do that, you have to go to your rigid body and then under solver, activate continuous collision detection. And I try to set this at four because I have, you know, top, bottom and then maybe two on the sides oh actually it's not continuous collision detection it's contact monitor that i have to set on sorry about that make sure you have this one active there we go yeah that sounds better i drop it and i hear the sound 
I like that. All right, beautiful. Okay. So that should be it for making simple interactive objects. And for the next video, we're going to look at how to make these doors work. See you next time.